Mission Impossible is directed by Brian De Palma, the director of Scarface and Carrie, and is written by David Kep and Robert Town. The film, of course, was based on the classic TV series from the 1960s and acts as a sort of sequel to that series, much to the detriment of some of the fans from that show. This movie and the film series that resulted from it is very much Tom Cruise's baby. Mission Impossible is his franchise. While Paramount owned the Mission Impossible rights and had been trying to get a film going for years, it wasn't until Tom Cruise came along to produce and star in the movie that things really got moving and resulted in Brian De Palma signing on to direct. Tom Cruise, as we've seen more so with the latest entries in the franchise, has dedicated himself to bringing breathtaking spectacle and entertainment to the Cineplex with Mission Impossible. So much of the series now prides itself on practical stunt work and insane action to try and differentiate itself from all the CG set pieces that are all too common these days, with Cruise doing most of the stunts himself. And you can really see that spark of dedication with this first Mission movie. While I would argue that this film is very much tied to the old series, there is enough done here to warrant watching more out of the franchise. And even though there are a number of scenes in this first movie that are now very famous, particularly the Langley CIA break-in, you can see the potential for what is to come with this series. Mission Impossible 1 is dedicated to bringing an intricate spy adventure and not much else. It's still a good movie, but I think that most of us would agree that aside from Mission Impossible 2, these movies have gotten better over time, with in my opinion Rogue Nation being the best one yet. Here we know Ethan Hunt as the young new spy in the Impossible Missions Force, who'll do whatever it takes to get the job done, often to the detriment of his team. Originally the studio wanted the entire show's cast of characters killed off in this film, which those cast members obviously objected to, completely refusing to be in the film version. So instead we have John Voight taking on the role of Jim Phelps from the original show. However, as I'm sure you all know, and spoilers for a movie that's 22 years old, Jim Phelps is the main antagonist of this film, revealed to be a traitor wanting to sell a list of CIA agents. This is a move that fans of the TV show still dislike to this day, and probably could have been handled with a bit more grace, but this whole movie is designed to be the passing of the torch from Jim Phelps to Ethan Hunt. The movie is bookended with Jim Phelps receiving the famous Your Mission Should You Choose to Accept It message at the beginning of the film, while Ethan Hunt receives the same message at the end of the movie. Ultimately, the plot is fairly straightforward, and most people go to these movies to see Tom Cruise do insane stunts. And that's where the value of these movies is. You've got a list of agent names that people are trying to steal, a plotline dozens of espionage shows and films have used over time, especially James Bond. We learn that Jim Phelps has been a mentor of sorts to Ethan Hunt, but outside of the opening mission, we don't really see much of their relationship develop, at least until the interrogation where we learn Phelps has faked his death. This Mission Impossible came at a time where James Bond had been in the realm of campiness for some time. As much as I love the Moore and Brosnan era Bond films, they're definitely products of their time. Mission Impossible tried to keep things fairly grounded and mostly contained by exploring different real life cities and focusing on straight up espionage. Yes, we have exploding gum and elaborate face masks, but they were far more plausible than the gadgets that Bond was getting. Brian De Palma takes all of this and blends it with his brand of stylized violence and drama. Yes, this means his dialogue scenes are often shot in Dutch angles, as if he wasn't sure that certain exchanges were meant to be intense. But at least you can tell that this is a uniquely Brian De Palma movie. And that's the best thing about the Mission Impossible series, is that each film has had a different director behind it, giving them all different feels and tones for better or worse. This tone and style best comes together in the movie's action scenes, which are all built up with excellent tension, before they're executed with what have now become famous set pieces. The fish tank scene in the restaurant, which was actually Tom Cruise's idea, is our first real indicator about how serious Tom Cruise was about using his own stunts to sell these movies. While the Langley break-in is just the quintessential Mission Impossible scene. From the cutting back and forth to Jean Reno and Ving Rhames, to Tom Cruise descending on the computer trying not to make a sound or raise the temperature, it still showcases how well Brian De Palma can put together these nail-biting scenes. And of course the bullet train sequence, which by today's standards, especially with the new 4K release of the movie, has shown its age, as most of it was shot against the blue screen. It does work because everything is moving so rapidly, but cutting between actors, the train and other live elements very fast, which stops you from noticing the visual effects too much, but as the movie keeps aging, the train sequence is one that will stand out against the rest of the film. Danny Elfman's score should be noted, as what he ended up producing is pretty good, considering he came onto the film quite late. He devises a lot of fun, tense tunes, while of course integrating that classic theme song from the show. It'd be weird to think how this movie might be if it didn't have the theme, because you forget how much it really adds to some scenes, and just makes you feel like you're on this great spy adventure. Mission Impossible is definitely a movie I've enjoyed for many years, particularly before the series came back with Mission Impossible 3. I definitely think the movies have gotten better, where we have gotten to explore Ethan Hunt more as a character, and understand what drives him to do the insane things that he does. But Mission Impossible is a good movie. It showed the potential that the franchise had, even though it stalled with Mission Impossible 2. I didn't grow up with the TV series, so for me the issues that TV series fans have with the film don't really bother me. I've always accepted Tom Cruise as the face of this franchise, and honestly as the franchise continues, and while these movies are at least getting better, I can't think of anyone else I'd want to be the face 
face of the franchise. Mission Impossible gets a 7.5 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your Monofix. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.